Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me well? All right, that is great. Thanks, thank you, everyone. So uh, today we will be discussing Dermacare and uh, the case is about this company that is seeking for funding for their venture. So another probably step in the uh, VC uh, co venture capital basically being provided to companies. Just trying to share my slides with you. All right, there we go. Let's start from the beginning. Okay, uh, so the agenda for today would be basically going through the case questions and uh, in the first uh, question so we would be basically discussing the uh, evaluating dermacare from a venture capital investment perspective and basically uh, we would be asking your question uh, we would be asking whether you think it is potentially a good investment or not and then uh, we would basically try to come up with an estimation of uh, the uh, cash burn rate. And uh, basically the question would be uh, how much cash investment will be required for Dermacare to become a self-sustaining business. And there are some assumptions that we would impose. And also there are some assumptions, some information in the case. Some of this information, to be honest, were a little bit uh, self-contradictory, but uh, we would just go with some uh, minimalistic assumptions, uh, which uh, we would discuss later. And then we will uh, do some breakout, act, uh, breakout groups 
And uh, over there, I have two objectives. So we would first discuss questions three and four uh, that are basically about what is your assessment of the band of angels and also which financing offer would you accept and why. So basically, we can just put these two questions together and ask which offer would you, uh, excuse me, so the question is, which offer you would go with, the venture capitalist offer or the band of angels or basically angel investors, and why? Uh, so you should kind of try to support your answer. And also, in the end, we would uh, start working on the investment evaluation report within your groups. You would start working on this report uh, because this is the first week that we actually uh, have the group. So some people didn't have groups. So uh, we, on behalf of them, we allocated them to different groups. So uh, probably it's a good uh, opportunity to get to know your teammates, uh, basically come up with a plan and uh, see how you want to basically tackle this. And you have to, for example, pick a company and uh, I, I guess this would be because throughout the term, there would be some sessions that we would provide this opportunity so you can basically start having discussions around uh, the investment evaluation report. So that would be the agenda for today. Uh, I would have loved to start with a case fact uh, presentation, but unfortunately, the person who was supposed to present the case facts just informed me uh, just half an hour before the class. So I, I just read uh, uh, his or her email that uh, the, he or she has dropped the class. So uh, therefore, we wouldn't start with a, with a like an official uh, case fact presentation. But what we can do is like. Uh, just uh, discuss the questions together in more details. And in that sense, uh, also get a better idea of uh, what the case is mainly about. All right, so what is this uh, Thermocare? So anyone wants to share their ideas that, uh, so we know that this is a medical device and its claim is that it's good for treating uh, acne and uh, basically it, it can reach to a very uh, large market and it provides a very uh, good alternative to the existing uh, treatments. But uh, what would you say makes this product uh, quite special compared to alternatives in the market based on uh, the information in the case. Yes, Ashwin, please go ahead. Yeah, so um, Thermica is one of the, about, there's only about like 20% of acne, whereas we attend um, dermatologists. And like from, in that sense, um, there's no product to really target the masses for treating acne. And Thermica, that's where Thermica comes in. Okay, and do you remember actually, what is special about uh, their uh, distribution channel that uh, kind of makes them a good sell to, you know, these uh, VC and angel investors? I think it's the fact that they're using um, DRTV, which is like sort of like the international channels that we have here. It's like uh, that's the way to reach um, millions of people. And like it's a good mm. chance of hitting the right mark. All right. Okay. Thank you. So, anyone wants to? Uh, I saw some people raised hand. So, uh, yes, Andrew, go ahead, please. Yeah. So they're going direct to consumer rather than going through the dermatologists, uh, and the reason they can do that is because it's got such a low cost of manufacture, so they can market the product at a much lower price point, um, which means that more more of the population can access it. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, Benjamin? 
Uh, yeah, sure. I think they, they also said that one of the keys to success was that they had to appeal to one of our three core needs of consumers. Um, this one being that, you know, people want to look and feel better. And for that reason, they uh, like the, the market for these sort of devices was elastic in that people were willing to pay sort of anything and like to get some sort of uh, potential treatment. Like there's a lot of hope. Okay. So, so far, uh, I think the uh, points that have been pointed. So let's, let's first go through uh, all the people who want to add and then we can like have a summary of uh, like w what the product is really about. So Nashita, please go ahead. Um, yes, the nature of the product itself is pretty interesting because it's essentially like it's very similar to laser treatment for acne, but um, instead of that, which costs like tens of thousands of dollars, it's a much cheaper alternative because um, it uses heat. Um, and also the fact that it's quite cheap in terms of their manufacturing cost and also they can sell it in bundles um, with topical creams and other skincare goods. It makes it... Um, their markup, they can mark it up quite a lot and get a lot of profit per sale. Okay, so it's also uh, like cheap to produce. So the uh, cost of production is not also that high. Is it like, would you agree with that? Yeah, that's what I said. Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you. I think that was Andrew. So, Rishi, uh, Please go ahead. Another point. This sort of ties into what I think Andrew said about the direct revenue TV. They're skipping retailer margins, which usually are, I think they were claiming about 40 to 60% of the profits. So by skipping that retailer margin and spending that money on marketing, I think they're able to appeal to a larger consumer base without increasing their cost of each good. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, definitely using this DRTV channel, I think it's quite innovative and distinctive in their business model. Uh, apparently, traditionally, uh, similar products would go through dermatologists, but uh, they are trying to basically directly uh, sell their products to their consu con uh, consumers and customers, which uh, uh, the way at least in the case that's been put, it's uh, quite revolutionary. And it, it costs, uh, it cuts a lot of uh, their costs, which uh, I, I think should be seen as one of their strengths. So, uh, does anyone want to add anything? Anything that you think is missing about the product or uh, any questions about it? All right, good. So, we can move on to like basically asking question of uh, who would invest in this Dermaker? So, um, maybe a better idea would be to put that as a poll. Would you invest in Dermacare? So imagine you are a venture capitalist or uh, an angel investor. And then the question is, would you invest in Dermacare or not? So I see that the majority so far, they are voting yes. Uh, so anyone who has voted yes, uh, can like share their ideas that as to why they basically would invest their money in Dermacare. David, please go ahead. Hi, um, hello. I think there's a few reasons why I would invest in Dermacare. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the reasons is because they have quite a strong founding team. So one of them has an MBA and I think the other two have um, technical degrees. So they actually understand the product and they know how to make it successful. And there's also things about their product that we talked about. It's somewhat innovative and it's differentiated and there's inelastic demand. So the consumers are willing to pay a higher price for it as well. And they also have a good um, marketing campaign planned out. Okay, yes, yes, uh, those were very good points. And actually I have uh, like some of these points, uh, we would discuss them a bit more in detail. Uh, Zachary, please go ahead. 
Uh, I think what I was going to say was I really like the model um, selling that product directly to the customer rather than to go through a dermatologist. I think that would, um, as we said before, DRTV cost, cost, cut costs and actually target a market that you usually aren't able to necessarily get to easily through traditional marketing. Um, and the other thing would be um, on that is you don't have to have people go through it's more of a sort of sense that you get appointments um, so, you're, just, you're you know, so many broke up so uh could you repeat the last point sorry my internet's sort of coming out uh yeah yeah it's, it's i'll just pass all right no, it's, uh, sorry for that, but uh, I, I couldn't hear you well. Uh, so, yes, are we? Um, yeah, so adding on to the other points raised, I think also the CEO was like really passionate about the product. So it's like more like they, like they all have an incentive to really drive um, the product to do really well. And also my initial concern was that the, like, comp the direct competition, um, so you know, is that, Z Z Zipa, Zappa, sorry, um, has like a really similar product and um, like it owned quite like similar to this product, but um, they target a different market. So they target like spas and they go to dermat like target dermatologists. So um, Dermacare um, looks at a different market in the DRTV and like to target consumers directly. So I think that like is like something positive um, because the direct competition do doesn't really interfere with their business strategy. And yeah, that, that's an excellent point. What do you think about the costs of uh, the Zeno Zitzapper? Uh, which one, basically which, which product is cheaper? Do you remember? Uh, so based on what I see here, I think that Xeno is sold to end users for two hundred twenty-five dollars, where uh, while this uh, Dermacare is sold to consumers uh, for about one hundred bucks. So I guess uh, the Xeno Zapper even price-wise, it's it's a bit more expensive. Uh, but yeah, thanks for that, Arani. Uh, Oscar, please go ahead. Um, yeah, so I just I would invest in them um, also due to their like DRTV business model. So we've spoken a bit about the um, the positives and the advantages for that sort of mark as a marketing channel. But in terms of a business model, the case sort of um, explored how if you, for example, you put out 50, like a hundred thousand dollars in advertising revenue, you would theoretically like best case scenario um or at least in one of the founders experience um get that same revenue back so once they've got that first a million or one and a half million dollars of capital invested like um in a best case scenario they're not going to need more capital allocated to the like to the business um down the road like as long as they stay to that drtv and as long as they're in like the inelasticity of demand and as long as the target market's as big as they predict it to be. Um, and then like the flow on effects um, for you as like a VC investor is that there's reduced chance of your investment to be diluted. Cause like what you don't want to happen is to get in here at the sort of pre-seed or um, like series A or B or C funding. And then you might get, you know, 20% of the equity and then all of a sudden they they have five or six more rounds and then you end up with like two or three percent so that really cuts into your IRR. yeah 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 that's that's also a very good uh point which basically we can come back to in uh last question that we we're asking whether you would go with the uh, vc or angel investors so i guess so far everyone uh have spoken from the yes camp but so jason and ashwin i see that you have voted no so why you guys wouldn't uh, invest in this business yeah so i voted no i think mainly because of porter's five forces um i think particularly for the the threat of an entry like if the other company is zen zeno or yeah 
incentive. Yeah, if they wanted to change their business model, I don't think it'd be too difficult for them. And considering they were faster off um, to get a production done and um, get through the kind of regulation, um, I think like it's a, it's a risky market to get into, I feel like, personally. So I think their competitive rivalry is quite high. The threat of new entry is also quite high and the threat of substitution is also quite high. So I personally just wouldn't get into it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Very good points. Uh, and Ashwin, do you have anything to add on top of that? Yeah, it was a bit like, I think like Danica has spent too much time on the sidelines, just biding their time, not really getting out to the market quickly because once the news of your product starts to go out quickly, like people are always looking to undercut you and things like that. And furthermore, what else was I going to say? Um, I think it's just mainly along the lines of that. Yeah, um, so that's not being able to get to market quickly. That's 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 uh, Oscar's question, and also what you just mentioned. Uh, so Oscar is asking whether they have patented their uh, technology. So I think it's a good point, and it's a bit concerning to myself as well. Uh, that they actually have missed FDA, one of FDA deadlines. Uh, so uh, FDA is this regulatory body in states where uh, medical companies or pharmaceutical companies, uh, uh, when they come up with an innovation or like they, they come up with a new drug or uh, same as this one, come up with a new medical device. So they would need approval from FDA and given that uh, you have the approval from FDA, uh, so you go through, I guess there are three stages uh, that FDA should uh, approve your product, your, your uh, drug, and uh, then after that, you can apply for a patent. So, uh, but one thing that was concerning to me was that they have actually missed this deadline uh, from FDA, I can't uh, remember on top of my head which page exactly was it. Uh, James is adding, meanwhile, uh, Zinozit Zapper got FDA approval, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so uh, if the competitor has already got the approval, that even makes it a bit more concerning. So uh, excellent points. Uh, thanks, everyone, for a great discussion. All right, uh, page 11, that information. Uh, so... To basically summarize uh, all the points, I think all my points uh, was mentioned. So uh, Benjamin is asking if a company doesn't get FDA approval, can they not sell their product? Uh, don't want to answer with 100% confidence, but I think the answer is no. Uh, because especially with medical, it, it's not, it doesn't apply to all products. It only applies to medical products. And uh, I guess, no, they, they wouldn't be able to uh, sell it uh, directly to the market. Uh, so FDA patents, usually they last for 12 years. So there is risk after that period. That's a question S7 is asking. So... Uh, just to clarify, I, I'm not sure if FDA would be the body that grants patents. So uh, in US, it's, I think, the uh, United States Patent and Technology Office. That should be the office that basically grants patents. But uh, that is conditional on FDA approval uh, for, you know, like pharmaceutical products. So, uh, but at the same time, uh, Again, I'm not 100% sure about this statement either, uh, but I can check it. So what happens is that companies, as soon as they come up with a product, they start the application process for patenting it. And parallel to that, they are also going through the FDA approval. So uh, th this wouldn't you know, like be a series of events following each other. They can go parallel to each other. Uh, and... All right, I think that should address all questions. So, uh, yes, to summarize all these points, I think in terms of success factors, we can say that the market size, there are 45 million people that are suffering from acne, and each year they spend about uh, $2 billion on over-the-counter treatments. And in terms of product differentiation, so uh, existing treatments 
apparently were not effective. Uh, so at least at the moment, they don't really have a very strong uh, competitor except for this, you know, ZitZap or whatever. And then the demand in elasticity. So because their product, it appeals to the people's need for looking better. So people, even if they raise the price, uh, doesn't really affect their demand much. Uh, so we can say the demand is quite inelastic in, in their case. Also distribution channel economics. So if they had gone with uh, direct uh, retail channel, it, it meant high costs for them. But given that they are going with DRTV, uh, they have already cut costs on that front as well. Uh, but there are obviously risk factors such as, you know, Zitzapper, uh, the regulations, they need FDA approval. And if they don't get it, uh, that would be a bit, big, big risk to their business. And also, it's not a traditional VC investment. So it's more of a consumer product. And uh, also VCs, so DRTV is not really uh, the area of expertise for a venture capitalist. So I, I'm not sure how a venture capitalist, you know, can contribute to the uh, business in terms of the DRTV, probably in a lot of other operations they can help them with, but especially with DRTV, it's it's not you know their their cup of tea, and uh, the small amount of money that is needed for uh, investment in this uh, venture in this venture, maybe it's it's not uh, you know it doesn't suit uh, a VC average uh, investment. And also the exit strategy is unclear. So it's more of a cash flow business. And uh, so probably you are looking more into dividends uh, if, if you invest in this business and not much in terms of capital gain uh, eventually. And uh, maybe even if you think that, well, maybe at some point you can cash out by just selling it to another private equity firm. Uh, that is also, you know, like, because in, in private market is not as liquid as public market. So I'm not sure if there would be, you know, much demand uh, for, you know, exiting uh, from your position like that. So these would also be the risk factors involved here. Uh, we can now go on with question two. So in question two, basically, we are asking that... Uh, well, how much the company at uh, its like uh, most negative balance, uh, cash balance, how much would it need? That That is the kind of gist of the question. So we have these uh, assumptions or uh, like information at the bottom of page five. It says that the product is sold at a $100 retail price. Uh, and let's say you spend uh, $50,000 on DRTV, uh, in the first fortnight, in the first two weeks, you would get $50,000 in revenue. And then moving forward after the first fortnight, you can expect a two to one ratio on your media. So it would be basically net revenue dollars divided by total media dollars. Uh, I just want to emphasize here that it's actually quite a strong assumption, uh, a two to one ratio for uh, of uh, on, on your media ratio. That that is a bit too high, I would say, and especially that it uh, they are projecting this uh, moving forward from uh, basically second fortnight. So uh, that is something that you know if if a uh, if someone is coming to you with this proposal if dermacare is coming to you your venture capitalist so uh, maybe this is one thing that you can be a bit skeptical about uh, also they are thinking of uh 20% of uh, for cost of goods sold and uh, for fulfillment cost roughly $10 per product and the retail price is uh $100 so this means that they are uh, looking into something about ten dollars for full uh, ten percent for fulfillment costs. So plus this twenty percent, so uh, uh, their margin would be around seventy percent. And then let's say that here you invested this fifty thousand dollars, you generated this uh, one hundred thousand dollars, and you reinvested, and then it turns into. 
because of this two to one ratio, it turns into this uh, $200,000. So this is the information here. We had uh, some additional uh, assumptions on the case questions. Uh, so I guess, especially, let me see. Yeah, so for example, I think uh, this retail selling price, so disregard this assumption because we are just going with $100 retail price. I think this was from somewhere else in the case and the case was not 100% uh, clear. So uh, it's, and it's not, we don't want to, uh, yes, Oscar, go ahead. Um, just quickly, um, I'm pretty sure that the $100 retail price is just like a casing example to flesh out like the mechanics of the DR ticket revenue stream. Yeah. I okay. think the $50, the $50 is what they were going to sell for. All right. Know. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It makes sense. Uh, so let's say because I have in, in a couple of seconds, I'm just going to show you like uh, how I've projected this number. Let's just go with $100 retail price. And then, uh, yes, so fortnightly cash spend on DRTV, it spends at $50,000 a fortnight and peaks at $400,000. And uh, fortnight five onwards, the DRTV sales, it would grow at 10%. So I have, uh, just to give you a big picture of uh, how we want to estimate this cash burn rate, I have prepared this uh Excel sheet, but well, I think the quality is not very good now. Let me just share with you like directly from Excel. Here we go. There we go. Okay, so as we said, let's say the initial sales is $50,000 and we have this 20% uh, cost of goods sold plus 10% uh, fulfillment cost we'd be looking at this 70% uh, margin, and we are looking at this two to one uh, revenue to total media spent uh, for cash inflows. And uh, the sales growth between period one to five would be 100%, and then afterward it would be 10%. So let's say that uh, we have this beginning of period fortnightly cash uh, investment for DRTV. So know that uh, first two fortnights we would each fortnight we would invest fifty thousand dollars and then each fortnight we would double it until uh, fortnight uh, five and then here each fortnight we would invest uh, four hundred thousand dollars and then we want to see based on these assumptions uh, how would our cash inflows look like and what would be our cumulative cash balance so the objective here is that you want to go to, you know, a VC or uh, to a uh, to an angel investor. And basically, you should propose a figure, uh, how much money you need. So the objective here is that uh, how you would basically look into, you know, cash inflows and outflows and uh, basically at which point in time you would uh, hit this uh, minimum uh, in terms of your cash balance. So we would start with this $50,000 and we know that in the same fortnight we would generate uh, the $50,000. Uh, it gives us a 70% margin. Uh, so we would be looking into uh, $15,000 external cash capital, which is required to meet next period investment. So it's basically uh, this one minus this one. So this end of period internal cash minus the next period cash that we need. So we would need uh, an extra $15,000 to cover this $15,000 and continue this practice uh, until, so basically given that you have these ones fixed, continue this practice until here, nothing would change. Uh, and only here we would, uh, our uh, sales growth, it would just go with this 10% instead of like just doubling uh, each fortnight. And uh, then you can basically come up with your cumulative uh, cash balance. So you, you started with $50,000 and then you would need another $15,000 and just you would just sum it up. And uh, 
what you get is that basically you would uh, hit the minimum at the end of Fortnite 4 and over at that period you would need $275,000 uh, funding that would be your peak funding requirement and if you just visualize that you would just see that uh, this is the minus 27 7500,000 and then probably your DRTV channel it uh, breaks even somewhere between Fortnite 5th and 6th so the takeaway here is not I, I don't want you to get lost in details of uh, like how these projections are working the takeaway is just to see how Basically, we look at the cash burn rate and what is the objective uh, when, you know, we talk about the cash burn rate and uh, what are the kind of assumptions that uh, we need? Uh, we are going to, you know, like have similar assumptions throughout the term, but this is just a very simplified uh, model and way of uh, looking at the information that was provided in the case. Uh, anyone... Has any questions so far? Okay, all right. Uh, so I guess we can go back to the case. Yes, Andrew? Uh, if you're trying to speak, we can't hear you, but please go ahead. Right. With your yeah. um, yes. That that can include the five to ten months until the product is ready, right? So it's yeah. So basically, it's gonna break even at Fortnite five or something. It's going to break even somewhere like Fortnite twelve because they've got a cash burn rate of one hundred twenty thousand dollars a month for the first, let's say, seven months. Yeah. So uh, to be honest, actually, this was just uh, assuming that after uh that five to ten months that before the product is ready so it was more looking into the drtv channel so assume that uh, the product is ready we are after that five to ten months uh, preparation period and now we are launching our product uh, so all these uh, computations it was just right after that period uh, is that clear so uh, so the first two assumptions that you saw in the uh, case I have not included them here, but if if you want them, like you can uh, basically have. Uh, so the problem is that my screen has frozen. But do you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good, but just give me a second. My Chrome has frozen. But in any case, uh, it's just taking its time, which is a bit too much. All right, in case I drop out, uh, just give me a second to join back again because I want to share my slides again, but apparently that's not happening. Okay, give me a minute or two because uh, my Chrome froze and I will just log back in. Thank you. All right, I'm back. Sorry for that. I don't know what happened. Here we go again. All right. Yeah, so as I was uh, saying, I think that was it Oscar that asked a question or so you can just add that five to 10 month here, like somewhere in like as minus in your timeline or you can just shift it uh, forward and just have this 
uh, fortnightly cash burn rate of one hundred to twenty thousand uh, dollars per fortnight here for uh, product development. Uh, so yes, this this is more I I think like focus on DRTV. All right, uh, this would be also the chart that I show you. So now what we are going to do is we would basically break out into groups uh, and these groups would be same as uh, your investment evaluation report. So it would be same as the groups that you have formed yourself. And so this activity would take around, uh, let's say 30 minutes. And uh, so for the first 10 minutes, please discuss whether you would go with the uh, offer of Band of Angels or you would go with the offer from the venture capitalist, the foundation capital. And basically try to motivate your answers, uh, obviously. And yes, also have someone to present your ideas uh, when we are back in the main room. And for the remaining 20 minutes, uh, discuss your investment evaluation report uh, because as I said, it's probably the first weeks that groups have been officially formed. Uh, so discuss that report, uh, just see what is your plan about it and how you want to, uh, like what is everyone's role, what, what company you are working on. And this is, uh, so throughout the term, uh, uh, on some sessions, we, we have this allocated time to basically give you an opportunity to work, uh, on, on this report, but uh, as I mentioned in week one, uh, it, it would be a better idea if you, on your own, like uh, per each week, uh, basically get to work on this. Uh, all right, so the way uh, I am going to, this is how we would break into groups because it's a little bit difficult, not a little bit, it's, it's literally, uh, like super difficult for me to manually assign you to to the groups that you have sent me so this is what i would propose uh let me see we have one two three four five we have five groups yes we have five groups uh in this session what we i would do is that from uh, I would let you to switch groups. I would just randomly allocate you now to five groups, but you would have this option to uh, switch groups. And so that we don't get confused from each group, uh, I would pick one person and uh, everyone else, please follow that person. So that person, please do not change your uh, group. And the other people, uh, just basically follow that person and join his or her group. And uh, yes, if we are missing that person, if that the people, so right now I'm just going to call five names. And uh, so everyone else uh, in your groups, uh, please join them. So Group one would be the group of uh, Zach, Zachary. So everyone, please uh, join Zach in your group. So it would be both Benjamins and uh, also uh, Anthony. So please join group of Zach. The second group would be, well, we have three Benjamins. The second group would be group of James, uh, James Daniel. So please join uh, wherever James James end up. Uh, the third group would be the group of uh, Oscar. So uh, Andrew, Jason, and Ho, please uh, join Oscar. The fourth group would be the uh, group of Ria. So Rishi, Nashita, Arani, uh, please join Ria. And the fifth group would be the group of uh, David. So Yamfeng, uh, David, Jackie, and Dong, uh, please all go wherever they, uh, 
wherever David ends up. Is that clear to everyone? I hope uh, I have not confused you. Uh, so, good, thank you. Uh, yes, as I said, it's a quarter to four, so let's aim for uh, a quarter past uh, four. That's when we would be back and we would uh, pick up the discussion. All right. I think we just need Ashwin to join. Oh, there we go. Sweet. Sweet. Um, oh, yeah, so we're discussing, um, what was the question? So three and four or just three? I think it's, uh, no, it's just three. Oh, wait, no, I think, right. I think it's, I think it's I think three it's and four. four. Yeah. Like, obviously, we have to talk about three to talk about four. Yeah. 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 So easy. Um, do we have everyone here? Pretty well. Yeah. Indeed. What, we have like seven people. With a hundred. <laughs> yeah, we got a we got a couple extras right now. <laughs> uh, I guess we're gonna have a big big fucking investment report. Sick. Less work. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. CEOs, you know, to get the analysts to do it. Oh yeah. Um. Oh well, yeah, with, with the band of angels, I guess what appealed to me is that, um, like everyone on the the band, I suppose, is former CEOs or tech experts. So when it comes to developing a new piece of technology, like I don't know if we're meant to be talking from the perspective of um, Dermacare, but in general, you'd probably rather experts on your team, um, especially if the VCs aren't very familiar with the industry. Yeah. yeah. Wait, but the VCs, they have, like, the thing is that they actually have, like, dedicated, like, head of two, like, business managers that actually, like, develop your business. Like, my understanding of angels is that, like, more, like, invest, like, here's, like, a bit, like, extra capital to make things just, like, split up the cracks, and then, like, we'll see the money later. That's, like, my understanding. I think I these like angels are a bit different, though. Yeah. I think I they think were all, like, they had the, the expertise of, like, you know, a uh, like a very, very strong amount of expertise in their certain field. So they could offer that to those people. And I think there was a specialized person who did have experience in DRTV as well. I think the main reason that like I'd go with Band of Angels, like small percentage of ownership that the taking is yeah. here. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, I think the VC would take like what, 60% of the valuation. Like yeah, it's like 54% or something like that. Yeah. I think. Yeah, but I think also, um, like, up to Dermacare to see, like, what they value more. Um, if it's the extra capital and, like, um, the expertise and the dedicated, like, team of the VC um, versus the dilution of their, um, their like, ownership. And obviously, okay. like, yeah, yeah, go on. Oh no! Finish, finish what you were saying. Sorry. Um, no, <laughs> yeah, what just, were talking. yeah, just pretty much of um, like seeing from their perspective, and like obviously as an external investor, you wouldn't know that. Um, mm. So yeah. Well, based on um, based on what they're doing, I feel like the angels would be more appropriate, just because. Well, assuming the angels know much about DRTV, which should seem to imply that, but the VCs seem to not stuck or um or anything like that and then jason made um just a google like doc do you have access to that yeah 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 so i'm looking at it right now so yeah i'm happy to do the deal yeah 
Um, yeah. In terms of um, Jason, your section has a bit on background. From yeah. memory. Um, yeah. Yeah. You wanna you wanna hit up that uh. We're assuming they, we're assuming they're U.S. Correct? Yeah. 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 You only hit up Ibis World's U.S. reporting page. You can get in there through the Union Library website. I'm pretty sure. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, can you put that link in the doc or something um, for like research?
Hey guys. Hi. Hi. Shall we talk about the question three on the case?
真那什么，小组讨论就是一定的讨论，怎么办？
Hey, are you guys are all Chinese? <laughs> um, I don't speak Chinese, but I can understand a bit. Okay. So you are. I'm sorry. Uh, you are an AB oh, I don't know. I, yeah. I, can't, yeah, I don't know what's wrong. You, you, you can help me? I think so, yeah. So why you respond to me? <laughs> if you cannot uh, hear me, how, how, how do you well, I got good now. I just couldn't before. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. mm. Also, uh, we have uh, another... Uh, group mate. Uh, name is uh, uh, just check it up. Uh, uh, Jason Lee. <clears throat> so are you? Um, so Debbie Lu, can you hear me? Debbie. I can hear you, but it's oh, yeah. not. It's not very clear. Oh, it's not very clear. Sorry about that. Uh, are, you, are, you, uh, are you a group with uh, uh, Kim Jong or you just uh, uh, deliver to this group uh, uh, automatically? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Mm. Uh, I mean, mm, are you uh, grouped uh, by... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. So, yeah, he put me in the group automatically because my group, like the, all of them dropped. Yeah, my group is, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. Every single one of them just dropped. Three of them. Yeah, I don't know. So, yeah. Actually, well, uh, we, have, uh, we, we just have this, uh, three people in my group and uh, they dropped. So I just yeah, we have the same problem then. Yeah. This group. Yeah. yeah. Sad story. Uh, I know, fine. Yeah. If, uh, if we uh, all walk, um, it should be fine. But uh, I don't know why Kim Jong is not responsive. It's not responsive to me. And uh, Liu, is, uh, Liu is good. It, Liu is just to switch to this course, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I just uh, added you as the Facebook friend. Did you uh, res uh, see? Uh, uh, received the request? Uh, yeah, I, I just did, yeah. Alright, alright. We can uh, just uh, group uh, uh, chat group together later. Yeah, yeah, of course. Add a message. After they add us, yeah. Alright, alright. That's cool. Uh, so, uh, Liu, can you hear me? Liu uh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, can you yes, uh, of just course. send our uh, send your face ID to us? Yeah, okay. uh, I, I, uh, I haven't have a Facebook account yet. Maybe I can uh, send you later. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to sign up. We just uh, have a Facebook ID. Entirely. Never mind. Actually, um... All right. Hi, everyone. We are back in the main room. So if I can... If you could please uh, mute your microphone, that would be great. Uh, so there would be a post about the interim report uh, very soon, I think this week. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, there would be some information and it would be announced on Moodle. So let's start with, uh, sure, let's start with uh, David's group. So what did you guys decide on? Uh, would you go with the Angels or uh, VC? Um, I think I would personally go with the uh, angels. So there's a couple of reasons. The main reason is they're offering 1.5 at 33%. So it's reasonably cheap and it's the exact funding that we wanted. And it's uh, less dilution. So it helps us maintain ownership and control. And there's also less paperwork associated with angels compared to VCs, whereas it's, it's a more vigorous process. And the Band of Angels, they're also quite a reputable group and they, they generally have quite deep pockets and you can potentially access them in later funding rounds. Um, they also have entrepreneurial experience and they're willing to provide mentoring. So that, that should be valuable. And overall, in general, I think angels are just more flexible and they're less demanding and they're less involved in the venture. And they might actually be okay with uh, like a dividend business rather than a large capital gain. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, yeah, those were, I think, all kind of, we can say, valid arguments. But then on the VC side, do we have any advocates of the venture capital funding? Any groups? decided on going with the VC? My group was pretty um, undecisive, but I kind of advocated for the VC side, um, mainly because I think it was the safer option. Mm -hmm. um, but also the VC seemed to come in with more specific and technical background. I think they brought more expertise, even though the entrepreneurs um, and the, so the angel investors had a wide range of people. I think it seems like um, I think in the, the case study it talked about is um, business school friend bringing in an expert, a medical expert as well, um, and also an expert for particularly for the DR TV campaign. Mm -hmm. so, okay. I think, uh, so I think partly because of the risk factor, um, in the sense that it would be safe to go with the VC, but also because of the expectation that they would. All right. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Benjamin. Would you like to add something on that? or Yeah, sure. It's it's kind of more that, yeah, just more on that risk, because I, I do think there's advantages and disadvantages to both offers, but I'm just more on that risk factor that Jason was talking about. I think that, yes, the while the, the VC firm offering more money and hence more dilution of ownership uh, could be seen as a bad thing, um, it did offer a level of stability in the sense that considering they missed that FDA deadline, uh, considering they missed that FDA deadline, there was a chance they might need to do sort of more funding requirements, uh, more tests, so they might need to you know burn up a bit more capital, which I don't think the Band of Angels would be able to provide at the valuation. Okay, so... Uh, another plus on VC side would be that they can uh, potentially provide more uh, funding. But I think uh, David also mentioned that because, you know, Band of Angels, they are uh, these uh, high net worth individuals, so they can also provide uh, this money. But uh, so let's let's first hear all the arguments. And in the end, because... Uh, I, I can let you know what eventually happened because obviously all, all these cases are uh, real world cases, but I will let you know what happened. But 
Uh, all right. So I think so far, let's say one uh, band of angels and one venture capital so far. Uh, how about other groups? Uh, group of, uh, well, I guess we are missing Ria, but uh, so Rishi, Nashita, or Arani, uh, if you would like to share your thoughts. So, sure, Arani, go ahead. Um, well, our group was kind of mixed, so, but like in terms of venture capital, um, <coughs> the other team in terms of them having more um, expertise, like technical background and expertise, so they would be able to um, be beneficial in that aspect. But then, then again, they also didn't really have experience with DRTV, which is what um, this product was, like their strategy was. Um, in terms of an the angels, um, we we thought we kind of seemed to be more heading towards that side in terms of their like less dilution involved, and there wasn't really any concern about what the like exit strategy was going to be. Whereas with venture capital, there would be um, like you'd have to have a like strong exit strategy, and um, in terms of the expectation for money. Um, angel, like the angel approach would be more flexible, um, whereas venture capital would require like a really big exit strategy and you'd have, also have to um, attract like the LPs and GPs um, in doing so. So it'd be harder to do so. Okay. So if you have to choose between one of them, uh, based on what you said, you would go with band of angels, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, so that would mean now we can go with the next group. So group of James, uh, how did your discussion go? Um, I think we're, we're leaning more towards the band of angels only because of that. Well, they're 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 a band of executives of you know high tech companies, and they'd have a lot more ex experience, I'd say, dealing probably with these sort of products and maybe might be more um, incentivized to work with a consumer product on like VCs who prefer a more rapidly growing biotechs or, um, you know, over the counter products. And also if we look at um, this foundation capital place, a lot of their past projects have been in um, like internet infrastructure, telecoms, things like that. So I think for me, and, and the group, we, we, we thought the Band of Angels would be better. I think Ashwin might have something to add as well, um, if he wants. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, um, thanks, James. So what we were mainly looking at was um, the fact that the VC is looking to take about 50% of the ownership of the Dermacare, which is pretty, like, disincentivizing for the entrepreneurs because, like, the main, like, payout of successful IPOs, et cetera, will be mainly due to having a big ownership firm. So sort of losing that, which is why we also, and all, that's furthermore with like the band of angels still go above the capital requirement to sort of pledge the peak funding gap. The our foundation is far more than what we did. And if there is like need to raise more capital, we still have that space and that ownership to give away. Okay. All right. Uh, so, my gathering is that so far, uh, basically we have discussed four groups and uh, mostly these four groups, they have been quite uh, like skeptical as to take a very strong position. So, but it, it shows actually, uh, I think it's, it's a good signal that you can, you know, weigh different options and see the advantages and disadvantages of uh, both options. Uh, so let's uh, go on with the last group. So that would be Zachary's group. How did your discussion go? So this would be group of uh, Zachary, Benjamin, and Benjamin again. I think we are missing Callum. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, I'll go then. Um, yeah, pretty much exactly the same as the last two groups. We were, again, leaning towards the Band of Angels. Um, we figured the Band of Angels being quite a reputable group and having quite a uh, quite a strong history of, like, performance, right, um, would be able to provide probably, like, superior sort of guidance and uh, management assistance operating in the direct to um, direct to very uh, clear and also in... Sort of Silicon Valley. Um, aside from that, yeah, we weren't really too concerned about the risk. Well, like the increased risk, it says, would come from um, angel investors like Shaw. Um, sure, the dilution of capital is less, so that's so that's better. That's a, like a plus for the angels. Um, but also, um, the concern that like you wouldn't be able to raise like follow on capital, we sort of um, we sort of shrugged that one off because uh, it's just a group of uh, individuals. Like you should be able to uh, raise that additional capital contingent on like passing FDA approval. Um, and in terms of getting FDA approval, the um, the angels uh, original commitment is already sufficient for that. It generally takes up to eight months to get approval. Um, get a tax burn rate of 120,000 a month. That's efficient. We are one and a half million. Uh, so we figured like that was probably the better alternative. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Benjamin. So I think the majority here uh, would go with Band of Angels. Uh, but just to give you uh, some follow up information on the subsequent events. So apparently Dermaker ended up taking money from both Band of Angels and uh, Foundation Capital uh, in a term sheet that combined uh, the similar features of uh, both uh, proposals. So if you can see the term sheets in uh, Exhibit 7A and B, and they basically could convince uh, both of them that they would accept uh, the money from them both. And probably the reasons, uh, so I think you basically mentioned all the reasons that I wanted to raise. So uh, the benefit of Band of Angels, we can say, uh, as it was just mentioned, there would be less dilution of the founder's stake. Uh, founders would have more control. There are some uh, knowledgeable angels, uh, such as Wally Bush, uh, who can provide very good uh insight and advice on how to work on the uh, medical in the medical industry and also uh, probably not working with Charles Mulder who is uh, the friend of uh, uh, the CEO of the company and he's in the VC that that can be a benefit but to be honest that's a double-edged sword so that uh, dealing with a close friend, it can also be a positive for, uh, for the VC. And apparently, so, uh, so both Molda and uh, Sko Chimara, they have reported that their close personal relationship, it actually has helped with uh, their uh, running the business. So as I said, this is a very tricky business, uh, dealing with close friends in 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 a business like this. Uh, but on the VC front, we can say that there would be a higher pre-money valuation. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. There would be more cash, which means more slack and VC expertise, it can add value. Uh, but probably you want to know what kind of value you want to add in terms of expertise. So if you are looking for very deep insight into the medical industry, probably. And that is, you know, that uh, not having that is a deal breaker. So probably better to go with Band of Angels. But if you're looking for more expertise and advice on the operational side, so probably VC in that regard would be a better option. But uh, as I said, in the end, they, they went with both options. Uh, so I think we, with that, we can conclude uh, today's session. So today we started with uh, basically uh, analyzing the business, a business who uh, was looking for funding between venture capitalists and uh, Band of Angels. 
and we basically uh, compare the benefits and disadvantages of each of these options. And uh, in your groups, you also worked on the investment evaluation report. Uh, thank you, everyone, for participating in today's session. Uh, and I hope you would have a long weekend ahead. And see you and talk to you next week. Thank you. Thanks, Raham. Thanks.